Chromatography is a biophysical technique that enables the separation, identification, and purification of compounds present in a mixture for qualitative and quantitative analysis. The compounds to be separated are distributed between two phases, one of which is called the stationary phase, while the other is called the mobile phase and moves in a definite direction. Chromatography is of two types, column chromatography and planar chromatography. Paper chromatography is a subtype of planar chromatography that uses a superior quality filter paper, usually the Wattman No. 1 filter paper as the stationary phase. In paper chromatography, the stationary phase consists of a layer of cellulose highly saturated with water. Water droplets settle in the pores of the paper make up the stationary liquid phase. The mobile phase is usually a polar or a non-polar solvent or a mixture of both and travels at the stationary phase carrying the samples or analyte along with it. Paper chromatography is therefore also referred to as liquid-liquid chromatography. The choice of solvents to be used in paper chromatography is varied and depends primarily on the substances to be separated. As far as plant pigment chromatography is concerned, one can use a variety of solvents including ethanol, methanol, isopropanol, acetone, and petroleum ether. However, Green leaves contain a mixture of pigments with varying solubilities in either polar or non-polar solvents. Therefore, for optimal separation of the pigment, we'll be using a mixture of both a polar solvent which is acetone and a non-polar solvent which is petroleum ether. Paper chromatography is subdivided into various types such as ascending, descending, circular and two-dimensional paper chromatography. In this video, we'll be employing the ascending type of paper chromatography. For this experiment, we'll need the following. Chromatography paper, chromatography jar with lit, petroleum ether and acetone mixture in a 9 is to 1 ratio, threads and tapes, pestle and mortar, sand, some fresh green leaves, funnel, filter paper, small beakers and vials, capillary tubes, scale and pencil, and a pair of scissors. To begin the experiment, take two to four fresh green leaves, discard the midrib and grind the rest in a small amount of acetone petroleum ether solvent mixture along with some clean pre-washed fine sand to aid in the grinding process. Add more solvent if required. Filter the extract and collect the supernatant in a small container. Keep this extract aside and proceed with preparing the chromatography paper and chamber. Take a strip of Whatman filter paper pre-cut to approximately 5 by 20 cm. Draw a pencil line about 1 cm above one end of the paper. Make a V-cut below the pencil line, like so. Meanwhile, take the chromatography jar and stretch a thread across the diameter of the mouth of the jar and secure with tape. Now, take the chromatography paper and using a fine capillary tube, apply micro droplets of the leaf extract at the center of the pencil line. Allow the spot to air dry and then add a second drop. Allow to air dry again and add a third drop. Repeat the application for 5 to 10 times. Now, make a fold on the other end of the paper. Place the paper on the side of the jar and determine the height of the paper relative to the depth of the jar. Make adjustments in such a way that the pointed tip of the paper lies below the solvent level in the jar but not the spot. Now pour the solvent which is a 9 is to 1 petroleum ether acetone mixture up to about 2 cm deep into the jar. Carefully lower the paper into the jar and use the fold to hang the paper on the thread. Cover the jar and allow the solvent to rise up the paper. 
As the solvent runs, you will observe that the leaf extract that was previously applied onto the paper starts to travel upwards along with the solvent, and as it travels, gets separated into its constituent pigments. Once the solvent reaches a desired level in the paper that isn't too high up but not too low either, remove the paper from the jar. Immediately mark the solvent front with a pencil and allow the paper to air dry. Mark the farthest distance traveled by each pigment on the paper. This is called the chromatogram. The green leaves used in this experiment were found to have four different pigments, namely chlorophyll B, chlorophyll A, xanthophyll, and carotene. Additionally, you might obtain a fifth pigment, namely anthocyanin, if you have used leaves with reddish coloration. Using a scale, measure the distance traveled by each pigment and calculate the retardation factor or RF for each pigment using the formula RF equals distance traveled by pigment divided by distance traveled by solvent.